Chairman, welcome to the Planning, Regulatory and Licensing Committee meeting of uh, Wednesday the 20th of July. Before we start the agenda, I'll ask Eric Morgan to read, read out the paragraph there in relation to webcasting. Okay, right. Please note that this meeting of the Planning, Regulatory and Licensing Committee will be recorded for subsequent broadcast via the authority's internet site. The images and sound recording may also be used for training purposes within the authority. The whole of the meeting will be recorded and the public seating areas are in view of the camera and by entering the chamber and using the public seating area, members of the public are consenting to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings as outlined above. And if I could ask members to ensure that their mobile phones are switched off because they interfere with the sound recording system. Okay, thank you. And before I start the actual agenda, uh, members will be aware, hopefully, that there is an additional item. Um, we've marked it as item nine. Um, and hopefully you've all got hard copies of that and have had a chance to, to read that. It'll be sent out by email as well. Thank you. Okay. Item one, apologies for absence, please. Yes, Chair, Councillors Brian Mansbridge and Councillor Leighton Smart. I don't think there's, you're all aware I'm apart from that. Uh, I then go briefly to item two, that's a declaration of interest, taking into account A and B. Two declarations of interest. If not, we then go to the open. Chair, room. sorry, this is um, interrupt you, but we all have letters of, on emails of Morris practice. All right, but can we put something in, in the papers that if on the agenda, if somebody want to speak to anybody in the planning committee, is a set procedure to go forward? Because they want to meet us individually. We couldn't do that because we've declared interest. But can we put something in now? Because at the end of the day, people think we can talk to people in the planning and we can change the rules and regulations. We just can't. It's all dealt with under the Council's Code of Conduct to do with planning committees. So it should already be there. Yeah, but people send us emails, want to speak to us one to one, and it's just not on, is it? I understand that, Councillor Smith, but I mean, there's not a great deal that the Council can do about that other than record it in the Constitution and the Code of Conduct, which obviously, as members, you are bound by. Right, we now go to open session and the planning applications. Item three, uh, two stroke 15 stroke 0264, and it's uh, about Fernil Bungalow, Ponsan Road, Ponsan, and it's considered a report of the corporate director, and it's pages one to 10, and I'm sure you're all going to take us through this one. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, this application is for a change of use of land for the keeping of horses, the erection of a stable and barn buildings, reinstatement of an existing pond, pond and engineering works. Uh, this application was received following an enforcement investigation. The site is located outside the settlement, settlement boundary and is, is identified in the uh, local development plan and is thus, thus in an open countryside location. It also fo forms part of the sink, which is a site of the importance of nature conservation. As a result of the conservation uh, consultation exercise undertaken, there have been one objection from the Town Planning Division's countryside officer. The officer is concerned that the development will result in a medium to long term significant negative impact resulting in the loss of sink land. There have been no objections as a result of the publicity exercise undertaken. The principle of the use of the land for the keeping of horses and the erection of stables is, is acceptable in this location. However, the size of the hay barn and the number of stables has to be justified. Due to the complexities of this particular case, the plan division employed an agricultural consultant to consider the proposal. Following his assessment, it was concluded that the number of stables and the size of the hay barn was acceptable. However, the area which has been created by the tipping of buildings, builders' rubble to provide a vast area of hard standing and access track is far too excessive for the needs of the operations of the site. The design and si size of the stables and barn are considered acceptable and given their site, they do not have a detriment detrimental impact on the character and peace of the area. Likewise, uh, the pond is considered acceptable. The application is therefore recommended for, for refusal due to the unwarranted 
unwarranted intrusion of the hard standing area and access track into the open countryside. Uh, this part of the development will also cause irreversible harm to the sink. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, questions from any members? Uh, Councillor Chaffin. Uh, am I correct in uh, assuming that the, the tipping of builders' waste on this land required permission, or is this illegal dumping? I think it requires permission both from Natural Resources Wales and also requires permission from uh, the planning department in terms of the engineering and operations that's been carried out to dump the material. Yeah. Any other questions, members? No, not any comments from members. Councillor Chaffin. As the Council's biodiversity champion, I support and endorse the objection made by the Town Planning Division Countryside Advocate. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? No? If not, um, you can see the, re the recommendation on page 10. Uh, can anyone move on the seconder, please? I move, Chair. You move, Councillor Chaplin. Is there a second? Second. Chair. Move with Councillor Simon Williams. Can you all now please vote? Councillor Jones. That's been carried, thank you. We now go on to agenda item four, uh, which is P stroke 16 stroke 0001. It's the Morlock Medical Centre, Berry Square, Douglas, Milford Tidwell. And that's to consider a report to the corporate director, pages 11 to 14. And here is the notice of item one. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, this is one of two applications on the agenda for Morlock Medical Centre. Uh, this application is for the erection of a single story rear extension. Uh, as a result of the public publicity exercise undertaken, there has been one letter of objection. However, the concerns raised relate to the operational use of the medical centre, which are not, not issues that can be taken into consideration in determining this application for a small extension. Uh, the design and size of the extension are, uh, are acceptable and they wouldn't have any impact on the amenities of the surrounding residence or parking considerations. Uh, the design of the extension is also considered as acceptable in terms of its impact on the character and appearance of the existing building. Therefore, the application is re recommended for permission, subjects subject to the conditions highlighted on page 14 of the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, questions from members? No questions? Any comments from members? Councillor Simon Williams. Sorry. Thank you, Chair. I just want to say that as a patient, I welcome this um, application, which is a very large uh, practice now with over 17,000 patients and it just really does seem like a very good development. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from members? No? If no other comments, um, are you ready to vote now? Yes, oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, we need a member and a seconder. Can, we, uh, can you put your speaker on, please, Mr. Speaker? Move the recommendation, Chair. Uh, is there another member? Councillor Samuel. Second, thank you. Right. Now we're we ready to vote. Now that's carried, thank you. Now then, we come to item five, and this is P stroke 16 stroke 003, Morlock Medical Centre, Berry Square, Douglas, 
and that's to consider the report of the corporate director pages 15 to 26 um, Hugh is going to take us through this one and we have a copy of the letter which you all need to read um, to be handy right now I'll give you a good five minutes at least to read it you all had sufficient time to read it? Yes? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah, this application is for a change use of part of the building to a pharmacy, which is an A1 use class. Um, the creation of a new entrance with canopy and footpath and the installation of new external air uh, condensing unit. This application relates to approximately 96 square metres of floor space of the Morelife Medical Centre, 30 
34 square metres of the floor space would be used for re retail purposes with the remaining remaining floor area being used for the administration and dispensing of medication. The proposal will result in the Pivens fa Pharmacy uh, relocating from its existing premises into the in the Dallas local retail centre to the medical centre located outside the local centre as defined by the local uh, development plan. The application also includes alterations to the medical centre to provide a new entrance from Victoria Street. Um, I'd like to draw members' attention to page 21 of the report um, and in particular the last two sentences of paragraph 3 um, which start with the DAS, which is the Design Access Statement, states um, the agent has recently provided confidential financial information which highlights that the retail sales amount to less than 2% of the total business business of uh, Pims Pharmacy. Um, if, you, if you notice in the report, it, it says that this figure hasn't been substantiate, substantiated, but they provided evidence now to substantiate that figure. However, it doesn't change the recommendation that's before members today, just based on that evidence alone. Um, as a result of the consultation exercise undertaken, there has been one objection from the Town Planning Division's Policy and Implementation Group leader. As a re result of the publicity exercise undertaken, seven letters of objection uh, from the same objector, including the one you just read, have been received. The majority of the objections are summarized, summarized on page 17 and 18 of the report and mainly relate to the la lack of justification for the proposal due to its location outside the Dallas Local Centre, highway safety concerns, which I think form the basis of the uh, letter you just read as well, a negative impact of taking people away from the local centre with no linked trips, and the detrimental visual impact of the entrance access and air conditioning unit. The alterations to the external elevations of the medical centre are considered acceptable and would not cause harm to the character and appearance of the building or the wider area. The engineering and traffic group, lead, group leader has raised no objection to the proposal and as such it is considered acceptable in terms of any impact on highway and pedestrian safety. The main issue in the consideration of th this application is whether the relocation of the pharmacy into the medical centre would cause harm to the vitality and viability of the Dallas local centre. Although the applicant has provided some information in an attempt to just justify a retail use outside the town centre, it is not sufficient. It does not show how that they does not show that there will be any harm. Uh, sorry, I'll read that again. It does not show that there would be no harm caused by the proposal to the vitality and viability of the local centre. As such, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you. I'll give you a, a question. Uh, Councillor Barrett first and then Councillor Williamson. Thank you, Chair. Um, not knowing this um, centre very well, um, I, I'm a bit uh, figuring what he was, he was saying about, about the siting of it. Um, I'm just wondering about the siting thing because I'm quite, um, don't know this, this area quite well, so I'm a bit confused about you saying about the, the siting of the pharmacy. So I'm requesting if, if it's possible to cite it. Would your reason for the fact finding visit be Councillor Barrett? Sorry, Chair. Uh, due to highways and uh, placement of this of the centre in this in this block, I know that roughly the block is, but I don't know what the safety issues of the highways um, are regarding this plan application. So highways, possibly then. Yeah. Basically, it's to see where the sighting is of it is in relation to other roads and to look at it from a highway safety perspective. Okay. Hold on. You didn't put your hands up. Did you, did you, didn't, want, did you, did you didn't want to ask a, a question? Okay. No, we, I think we oh, clearly so could take a vote oh, on oh, whether okay. to do a fact finding I decision or not. I haven't seen the green because yes. I'm not seeing any Yes, no. It, it, we can. Right. We'll, we'll move in at the, uh, from the site meet then to the uh, sorry. Oh. Right, thank you. I'm looking at the conclusion on right. 
but I would like to have asked a question first. You will have, if the site meeting is agreed, you will have ample opportunity to ask questions at the site meeting. And when we come back to the planning committee yes, in there'll September. Be a full debate. Sorry, there will be a full debate. If a fact finding visit is moved and we go on a fact finding visit, it will come back to the planning committee again and you will have a full chance to raise questions and have them answered then. And of course, you can ask questions at the fact finding visit. Thank you, but as ward councillor, I would have liked to have had the opportunity to have, to have asked my question first. Councillor Williams, I can't decide who I, I mean, Councillor Barrett was given the opportunity to ask his question first. There's nothing in the constitution which says that the ward councillor must have, must ask his question first. So we will have to proceed with what Councillor Barrett has requested. Yes, my question was going to be second, but that option has now been taken away from me. I would have liked to have had the option to have, s to have asked my question this, e this evening. But as I said, you are going to have an opportunity at the site meeting and when we come, if, if it is agreed, to the, to the planning committee in September. Right, hold on. Um, I, I have this been moved by Councillor Barrett for a site meeting? Is there a seconder? Yeah, I'll second that, Chair, in the interest of progress. We need to vote on whether we're going to have a site. I would have, my voting on the site visit would have depended on answers given to questions. So should we learn by a, a mistake is the right word, but in future at question times yeah. that uh, a motion isn't accepted till members have had an opportunity yeah. to put a uh, opinion. I mean, you can't stop a member doing it, but you could ask and say, look, hold on, if you do this now, you will be curbing the debate. I fully understand what you're saying, Councillor Jones. Unfortunately, I mean, w as members of the planning committee, you're all aware of what the constitution says, and you're all aware of how planning committee runs. It, the, fa the fact finding, it's been moved and seconded now that there be a fact finding visit. We are unfortunately gonna have to take a vote. None of us know which way it's gonna go till you voted. So it may be that there won't be a fact finding visit and we can carry on with the debate now. Again, you know, I, I wouldn't vote against the fact finding visit because I don't know the fact and voting against it could be wrong. And I appreciate what you were saying, but what I'm saying, we're all human, we can all make little mistakes so that we could be pulled up and say, look, you're quite the time to move the motion, but I would remind you that this will be curbing the debate. That's all I'm, I'm saying. Right, so now then, we need to vote now whether we're having a site meeting or not. You see the voting figures there, that's been carried. There will be a site meeting in this meeting, okay? Can I just check, Councillor Barrett, which officers you require? M mainly, does mainly mean just highways or do you mean mainly with somebody else? Obviously the planning officers and any officers you recommend, but the, the highways, that was my, that was my um, main one, was the concern what, what uh, he, the plan officer said about the situation of, of the, the maybe building, is built a building officer as well. Sorry. It isn't for us to recommend which officers you want, it's for you to tell us which officers you would like to attend so that they can answer the questions you have. So we're talking about 
Well, this is a planning officer, or planning officers, a highways officer. But is there a, anyone else that you would consider a political leader? Right, come to Senator Lewis and then Councillor Chan. Mr. Chair, in, in view of the reason for the refusal, could we perhaps have somebody from Economic Development as well to attend? Uh, yes, we could. Um, any particular aspect of economic development? Um, it is rather a large department. Yeah. Whoever necessary really to determine the the commercial impact or the negative commercial impact um, for the loss of a pharmacy on the high street. Councillor Chaplin. Chair, as I voted no, I will not be available for the Senate meeting. Okay. Yes. Um, if you all remain at the end of the meeting so that we can try and sort out the date because we, we go into the major holiday month and we need to have a quorum uh, for a site meeting apart from the officers attending, okay? Right, the, the next item on the agenda is item six, that's P stroke 16 stroke 0048, land to the north of Swan Street. It's the former police station Holly's Health Centre site um, and there is a letter to be read out, uh, well, for you to read from Roxbring. And again, I'll give you up to five minutes to read the letter. <coughs> this only came in yesterday, so that's why you, you need to read it before we have any questions or discussion.
we all okay? Are we ready? Do you want to, anybody want a bit more time to read that particular letter? <coughs> just see one or two of you still reading it. Right, I think I need to see that we all have opportunity. It is these are four full pages in the quarter. Uh, when the temp was there, an email, and it only came in yesterday. So I'd pass the email to you to go through the details. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, this application is for a new bus station and public realm improvements through the provision of hard and soft landscaping and associated works. Uh, the bus station will replace the existing bus station to the north of St. Dibble's Shopping Centre. The station would accommodate 14 bus stands and 10 layover bays. 11 of the stands would take pa passengers directly into the bus station building. The bus station building will provide accommodation over two floors with a large open public concourse at ground floor along with public toilets, a, ca a cafe and offices for South Wales Police, a manager and an inspector. The first floor accommodation would mainly contain facilities for the bus operators. And then new access will be created off Avenue de Clichy to provide to enable buses to enter the site. The buses would exit the site via Swan, Swan Street. In order to, to accommodate these movements, there would be a junction improvement on, Swan Street, uh, on Swan, Swan Street and Swan Street Car Park would also be reconfigured. The proposal would also result in blocking up of an access to the service yard C of St. Tibbs shop Shopping Centre and the creation of a new entry and exit point of Avenue de Clichy to enable the service yard to function. Alterations are also propo proposed to widen the footpath adjacent to High Street Chapel and another service yard D of the shopping centre. As a result of the consultation exercise undertaken, there have been no objections. As, a re as members have already read, as a result of the publicity exercise undertaken, <coughs> there has been one late letter of objection <coughs> from an agent acting on behalf of Roxpring, the owners of St. Tilbury's Shopping Centre. As mem members have had the opportunity to consider the objections, I will re respond to the main points in the letter. Whilst the concerns of Roxpring are noted, as highlighted in the report, the bus station has been specifically designed so its main entrance exit doors are aligned directly opposite and only seven metres away from an entrance to the shopping centre. Although outside the scope of this application, I'm also aware that negotiations between the regeneration section of the council and Roxpring have taken place with the aim of improving the appearance and layout of this part of the shopping centre. Although improvements are proposed to enhance links to the high street, railway station and beyond, it is considered the vast majority of pedestrian movements to and from the new bus, bus station will still be via the shopping centre. The committee may also be aware that a benefit of, of the proposal is that the old bus station will enable uh, to operate while the new bus station is being constructed, resulting in no disruption, disruption to bus services. As a result of this proposed development, it should also be noted that the existing bus station site would itself become an extremely important town centre regeneration site, which also provides an opportunity to enhance the attractiveness of the town centre and adds to it, add to its vitality and viability. As highlighted in the report, it is considered that the provision of the impressively designed modern bus station developed in the propo proposed location would enhance the town centre and improve its viability and attractiveness. As such, it accords with the relevant LDP pol policies. In terms of movements within the service yard, the Council's engineer and traffic group leader has assessed the swept path information submitted with the application 
as we clearly as the proposal will not have any adverse impact on turning movements within either of these service yards. Finally, the agent has pointed out that the impact of the development on the setting of the town, se town centre conservation area should be assessed in line with policy BW6 of the local development plan. This policy is referred to in the report as being relevant to the determination of the application. Com committee will be also be aware that the Design Heritage and Conservation Officer has raised no objection on these grounds. Um, the report also highlights that the proposed development would undoubtedly have a hugely positive impact on the appearance of the area. Therefore, given that policy BW6 was taken into consideration when arriving at the, this conclusion, it is considered the impact on the setting of the conservation area has been fully considered. If there is any doubt, it is considered that the rede redevelopment of the site, which was once occupied by a visually unattractive police station and health centre, with an impressively designed bus station building and public realm would without doubt have a positive impact on the setting of the conservation area. As pointed out in the concluding paragraph of the report, the proposal would add another very important piece to the amb ambi ambitious development jigsaw, which is undoubtedly improving the appearance and overall attractiveness of Merthyr Tisdale to both its residents and many, many visitors. As such, the application is therefore recommended for refusal, uh, for permission, sorry, <laughs> subject to conditions on page 40 and 40, 40 to 44 of the report. Sorry, Chair, for that. Uh, oh, nearly a Freudian <laughs> slip there. Uh, hopefully, before I ask the questions, you've all seen a copy of the plans as well, which have been put up in the members' rooms prior to this, this meeting. Any, any questions? Questions of members? No? Any comments? Well, any question, question, question. Hi, Chair. Um, I know I'm first again. I'm not going to say too much. Um, I just, I think this is concerned, but who have said that there is an access in the plans from the bus station into the centre, but they, but they are saying that there's not, so what, what they're saying is it's not suitable or, sorry. No, I think the concerns of the owners of Roxburn is that because we're enhancing the access into the high street itself, it'll take away the footfall from uh, the shopping centre. Uh, so they, they're worried about footfall numbers being taken away from the shopping centre uh, into the high street. But as I've, I've just said, the main entrance doors to the bus station building are directly opposite the entrance or one of the entrances to the shopping centre. And therefore, in my opinion, uh, and others' opinion is going to be uh, the huge amount of majority of people are going to go via that uh, entrance into the shopping centre. Uh, questions? Any, any questions? Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Chair. And the current uh, bus station has a news agent, a cafe, used to have public toilets and a fast food facility, I believe. I, I believe you mentioned um, a cafe, public toilets. Is, is there a facility for a news agent? There is a kiosk going to be in there, which will sell, sell things like uh, that, yes, but it, it's a small kiosk, yes. Okay, so I was just going to add to that. Our colleagues in um, economic development are currently trying to facilitate somebody to occupy that. Hello. Jeanette. The, you're saying that the economic development team are trying to facilitate uh, that. So the people who currently uh, run the uh, news agents, whatever, in the shop, they won't be moving down to the new bus station, is there? I'm not sure of, of the exact um, agreements in place, but I'm sure they'll have the opportunity, the same as anybody else, you know, I if they're interested in leasing that. Any other questions or members? No? Councillor Chaplin, comments? Um, drawing uh, members' attention to page 29, uh, it does say, this waiting area links to the Concord to provide a significant public space. Indeed, the concourse has been designed to accommodate up to 700 people per hour. I assume that is an increase in footfall, and uh, certainly these modern facilities are, are ones which uh, we should be supporting. Thank 
come to a close, really. Thank you, Chair. I think uh, one of the, um, the thrust of the argument from um, the objector was in relation to the town centre um, and presumably uh, the effect that um, the moving of the bus station will have uh, on the town centre. Um, the point I would like to make is that a, a town centre, in my opinion, is a very fluid thing. Um, if you look at um, the town and the borough of Merthyr Tidville in, in our lifetime, the town or what's perceived as the town centre uh, has, has changed dramatically to what it used to be. Uh, when you consider the outer town areas of Kawartha, um, Kunderbach, uh, and other areas, the town is actually expanding. Uh, so where exactly um, do they define the town centre? Um, an another aspect uh, in relation to the police station. Um, now the police station uh, is demolished and the facility is moved to the Gavatha Plateau. Again, an ex expansion of the, of the, of the town. Um, I, I don't really see uh, a problem. I think the, the only thing, um, or the, one of the main things to consider is that the bus station um, is being moved closer to the rail links, which will enhance the whole thing for everybody. And on that basis, I'd like to move the recommendation. Hold on. Hey, uh, well, come to the Smith and then come to Lewis. Mr. 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 Sorry, Chair. Can I say I support this because it's our local we've gone. We have we've been criticised over the last months. No, t no public toilets in the town centre. So we're having that. We've been criticised because we moved the police station from Swan Street up to where it is now. There's no direct link to the police, so we've got them in place. We'll have a new building to enhance the town centre and to improve that. You know, at the end of the day, the bus station they got now is, is old-fashioned. It's a mess, right, and it's old. We want to change. For us to move forward uh, as a county better, we've got to improve the facilities, and this is part of it. And especially you now with, with everything that people have criticised us over the past, we bring it back into use. So I'll support it. Thank you, sir. Uh, come to the Jones, and then come to Lewis. Um, <laughs> yeah, can I uh, just say uh, I'm quite happy to support uh, the recommendation, but I think it is also very, very important that the walkway or Collingwood way from the bus station into the town to Tidville Shopping Centre should be of the same standard and quality as the footpaths or whatever go into the main street in the town. So I think it is important that one isn't poorer looking than the other and that they should it should be of a high standard for our own benefit anyway, that for the, the town centre to to boom. Uh, so I think and I think it is mentioned there about um, impinging on the their land with regard to deliveries. You know, I think that's got to be make sure that there, there, there won't be a a problem in the future with deliveries. Okay. Dr. Lewis. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just to support Ernie's uh, comment with regards to um, enhancing links to our railway station, it's obviously one more one step closer to a fully integrated um, transport system, which I think these county boroughs are crying out for, and moving forward and thinking of the future, um, obviously the metro system as well. Right, before I call for any other questions, out of comments. Well, but, uh, perhaps uh, the developers could uh, <laughs> give us free transport on the train. All right. Uh, if there's no other comments, I've got a comment. Um, if you look on page 32, top of that, headed publicity, the plan application has been publicised by means of a notice in the Merthyr Express on the 25th of February. The application for this came in in February displaying 15 site notices within the facility of the site and by sending individual letters to local properties. As a result of these publicity exercises, 
no letters of objection have been received. Roxbring left this until yesterday. That is four months after this application has been submitted to, to uh, list their objection. And if you look on page two, and it, the first two, three, fourth paragraph down, and I'll quote it, taking into account the foregoing, the proposal will, in our judgment, severely impinge upon the retail strength and attraction of both the shopping centre and the wider town centre. Frankly, having read this report, we went through a very extensive consultation exercise with the public before this to find out from the public and particularly the traders what their views are. This proposed bus station is not being moved a half a mile away from the, the, the St. Peter's Shopping Centre. It's the other side. And when you see, hopefully, all this being, if we, we pass the application, being built, and what's uh, and the design of the bus station, this, in my opinion, will be one of the last things to be built in the whole part of the puzzle that's been going on for the last few years. Uh, so I couldn't disagree with Rockspring more so when they say that this will severely impinge upon the retail strength and attraction of both the shopping centre and the wider cent town centre. Frankly, I think it will have the opposite. Um, so, comments, if there's no other comments, if not, can I ask that we, we, we move recommendation, Who's going to move? Uh, move recommendation. Oh, sorry. Originally, Councillor Godworthy has already has moved it. Moved by Councillor Smith. That's been carried. Back to the agenda. Uh, the now um, uh, item seven. That's P stroke 16 stroke 0 108, the Wern and its vast road message table, and as I can see, report the corporate director, pages 45 to 54, and Julia to consider this. Thanks, Chair. This application relates to the site where Merthyr Tidville Rugby Club play their games, locally known as Wern Field in Anisvach. The committee will recall that two applications for developments of this site were granted planning permission towards the end of last year, and some elements of those permissions have since been built. This application seeks to combine those two applications whilst also now seeking permission for a training building and revised parking arrangements. As such, in all, this application seeks planning permission for two spectator stands, a training building, two dugouts, an artificial surface to one of the pitches, portable toilets, creation of a concrete footpath, floodlights, and provision of parking areas and access points. No representations were received as a result of the consultation and publicity exercises carried out. The principal considerations in the assessment of this application relate to the impact of the proposal on the character and appearance of the area, on surrounding residents, and its effect on highway and pedestrian safety. These issues are discussed in the planning considerations section of the report, and it concludes that the development is acceptable and complies with the relevant LDP policies. The recommendation on page 52 is that the application be approved subject to conditions. Thank you. Any questions from members? Councillor Chapman. Um, yes, the extensive new car parking. Is that within the current Wern site or have they acquired additional land outside? The majority of it is within the uh, current Wern site. I believe there's a small area um, to the top near Penland View that they've also acquired that becomes part of the Wern site. It's particularly the, the site accommodating, I think, 115 parking spaces. Is that within the existing um, curtilage of the Wern, uh, of the Wern Field operated by the rugby club? The 115, the space, the area with 115 spaces is, yeah. Any other questions? No other questions? Any any comments? No 
no comments? If there are no comments, can someone move the application? I'd like to move the recommendation, please, Chair. Councillor Chaplin, is there a second? I'll second it, Chair. I'll second it. Please vote no. That's been carried. Thank you. Now we go to item eight, and that's uh, application number T stroke sixteen stroke zero one zero nine, and it's uh, in the location is the Rock UK Adventure Centres Limited. It's um, it's known as the Summit Centre, the Old Drift Mine to Lewis to Harris. David's going to take this. Thank you, Chair. Uh, okay, this application relates to the Summit, Set, Summit Centre, previously known as the Welsh International Climbing Centre, uh, which you're probably familiar. It's located approximately 1.35 kilometres to the south of the settlement of Bedlinog and to the north of Trelewis. The site itself is relatively isolated, um, situated in open countryside with high valley sides woodland areas and a watercourse that runs along the uh, western boundary of the site. Full planning permission is sought to redevelop the summit centre to improve the existing facilities there. Uh, in summary, the main elements of the proposal involves the demolition of part of the building and the erection of a two-storey extension to provide short-stay visitor accommodation with 27 bedrooms and associated dining hall and kitchen area. The erection of a single storey extension to provide a new cafe and staff offices. The provision of a new children's play area and swamp area for team building activities. The refurbishment of the exterior of the building, including recladding and rendering of elevations. Internal alterations to relocate the existing gym facilities and the resident instructors accommodation. Uh, the provision of an LPG storage area biomass build, uh, biomass boiler system, secure storage areas for recreational equipment and improvement works to the landscaping and parking arrangements. It's acknowledged that no objection has been received from either internal or external constantees. Uh, however, one letter of objection was received from a local resident uh, who was situated to the east of the site. Their main concern related to the potential noise generated at the site as a result of the proposed external works and increased activity at the site in conjunction with the existing businesses which are also located there. For the reasons set out in the planning considerations section of this report on pages 61 to 66, it's concluded that the proposed expansion and refurbishment of the existing recreational facility is considered to be appropriately located at the former mining sites within the countryside setting. The proposal would improve the viability and, and the business sorry, would improve the viability of the business and its prospects as a key destination, uh, which would bring considerable economic benefits to the Merth and Tidville, particularly to the neighbouring communities. Whilst the proposal is located within a flooding zone, which does conflict with the advice set out um, by the Welsh Government, it is considered that the risks can be adequately addressed and as part, uh, can be adequately addressed as part of the development. Furthermore, the regeneration of the sites and the creation of a significant number of jobs within a deprived part of Merthyr Tidville outweighs any potential flooding concerns in any case. Accordingly, the proposed event is considered to be acceptable and complies with the relevant LDP policies. And as such, it's recommended that it be approved subject to the nine conditions set out on pages 66 and 68 of this report. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from members? No. Any comments from members? Councillor Gosling. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Well, just to support the application, um, this has been an ongoing uh, regeneration of the southern area of the borough. Um, since the demise of the coal industry, there's been considerable effort and money uh, gone into that area. Uh, and this is just a, another piece in the jigsaw um, to get us where we are. Councillor Williams. Thank you. I just want to reiterate what um, 
Councillor Goldworthy said, this application is uh, further proof that Merthyr Tydfil is slowly and surely becoming the activity capital of Wales and also the regeneration capital of Wales. So I welcome it wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Chapman. <coughs> well, obviously, I uh, welcome uh, uh, the regeneration of this area, especially the 35 additional jobs that this is going to create. Some other comments I I'd just like to, to add. Um, and if you look at page 63 in the uh, uh, whole paragraph, which is above the heading Design and Landscaping, the Chief Officer from the Community Re Regeneration Department, and quotes, Rock UK Summit Centre is a major tourist attraction in Merthyr Tydfil and is recognised as having the largest indoor climbing wall in Wales. The attraction hosts recent figures of approximately 19,000 people per year in 2015. And to, to add to uh, Councillor Goldworthy, uh, he indicated the proposed development would create a total of 35 full-time equivalent jobs, and there will be um, accommodation there 27 rooms, um, it's, a, it's a bit extra, 27 rooms for what we currently have there, for people to actually stay there. Now, together with all the other tourist attractions that we have throughout the county of Berra, and I'll add one other, and that's Bike Park Wales, because the attraction there has taken off. There are thousands of people coming there from all over the country. Um, so, this is a major um, proposal and it's one of 10 uh, strategic centres throughout Wales which has got the full support of the Welsh Government. So if there are no other comments, can I ask please for a, a mover? Yeah, I'll move the recommendation, sir. We move by Councillor Gordon. Seconded, thank you, Chair. It's been seconded by Simon Williams. Can you all please now move? That's been carried, thank you. Now then, we go to the additional item, which is item nine, um, and that's uh, the application number is P stroke 16 stroke 0061. And the proposed development is the construction of an embankment, uh, in brackets, engineering works and provision of a drainage ditch. And uh, Hugh Roberts is going to take us through this one. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, just first to uh, uh, let the committee know where this application is. Um, if you have a look on the first page of the additional item, you can see quite clearly the red line boundary of the application site there. And the area of land to the, uh, to the west of that, the large white area, is the area which is currently be being developed by Taylor Wind Depot Housing. Uh, so just give you a context of, of where this application is. Um, as a result of the consultation exercise undertaken, no objections have been received. As a result of the publicity exercise undertaken, two letters of objection have been received. The majority of the objections raised relate to the housing development currently be taking place on the former Mardi Hospital site. As such, these cannot be taken into consideration when we consider this, this application, which is purely for the embankment and the drainage and the landscape and all. Uh, with regard to the concerns raised about the flooding of the footpaths, the drainage channel is proposed that will collect surface water runoff and direct it into an existing drain drainage channel located to the east of the public right of way. The engineer and traffic group leader has raised no objection to this proposal. The proposed landscape embankment would complement the character and appearance of the area and such the application is recommended for permission subject to the conditions highlighted in the report. Thank you, Chair. Now, questions. Any questions? Mm. Questions? 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 Here comes the survey. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to request a site meeting, please. And why you want a site to be this, Councillor Slater? Um, I'd like to consider the visual impact of the appearance of the area and the development. And I'd like to consider the water issue um, with the possible implications. You know, we've already got egress on the site as it is. 
So I'd like to consider those two things, please. Um, Dr. Scott, that's been moved. Um, is there a seconder for that? Thank you. Councillor Galbraith is hanging up. Yeah, I'll second that, Chair. Okay. We'll um, be uh, voting as to whether we have an excitement in it or not. Well, well it, it is. That's been carried for a site meeting. Okay, now uh, you need to know in the UK which officers you want, Councillor Blue. Uh, can I please have a planning officer and a drainage engineer? Thank you. Okay. Um, we now go on to the, there's the information which are there for information 9, 10, and 11. I have two or Two appeals received there, and the usual delegated report list from the 1st of 3rd of June, item 11. Other business, uh, item 12, any other business? I have none, and I declare the meeting closed.